Yes, who has the right to exhibit the other? And we have to address the issue of power. Who does tell the story? Because this summer, the digital opening of the Humboldt Forum in Berlin stirred controversy. Displaying colonial treasures in a former imperialist palace provoked much outrage. And uh, Shimamanda Adichie gave a keynote speech at the official opening of the Ethnological Museum and the Asian Art Museum. Um, yeah, the position of power is always a discussion in, in this regard. Um, I would like to ask everybody at the table, do you agree with Shimamanda Adichie to this, to, in regard to this point? The issue is first an issue of power. Um, who will, could I give the floor first? Valika. Um, it very much is an issue of power. And we should be thinking about not only the ownership of the objects, but also the voices. Who gets to tell the story from uh, the museums? So that was actually one of the first things that we tried to change in the Rijksmuseum when we started working on the slavery exhibition, is to change the work floor. Who is there? Who does the research? Who takes a second look at our collection? Who decides how to deal with it? And uh, we changed the partnerships. Everybody we deal with outside of the museum. We brought knowledge in. We uh, uh, started new partnerships. So in every aspect of the museum, every department of the museum had new partners to work with. Um, and that changed the narrative, ultimately. Um, and what we are striving to be is a museum that is the museum of every Dutch person, all the people who live in the Netherlands, and that includes the people who have ancestors who were enslaved, um, but if come I from could, colonial. If I could inter interrupt you, mm -hmm. um, working with partners is, is of course very important uh, into getting different perspectives in uh, the exhibition and different voices to be heard. On the other hand, um, it doesn't change the structure of power within the Rijks Museum because you work with partners who are externally, um, you know, b b b consulted to create the museum. The structure of power, the pyramid of hierarchy, isn't changed by working with partners. And isn't that what Shimamanda is addressing? That you should address the structures of powers, the structures of hierarchy. Absolutely, and that's why I began saying that we needed to change the work floor as well. Mm. And we looked at the pyramid within the organization. Um, I started out as a curator, brought in especially for this exhibition. Now I'm the head of the department. So we are trying to change the, the complete pyramid in the museum. But of course, it is a, um, um, a process that takes time. Right. But we need to keep doing this. Marion, you would like to... But perhaps we have to be honest, it's not possible to avoid structures of power, I would say. Um, but concerning culture, culture is always um, part of an entangled history. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that culture evolves n never isolated. It's always a transcultural process, even with the Benin bronzes. Um, so the kingdom of Benin was very much, um, there were very many connections with the international um, other parts of the world in those years. So um, if culture is a product of, of something which comes together and is hybrid always, um, what does it mean? So, but, but you can't avoid it when you, you can't, you can't let the, the artworks always travel. So you have, they are, they are speakers. Even if we invite other people to have uh, multi, multi, um, um, multiple perspectives on the artworks, we can't avoid it, I would say. Uh, can, can you? Because it, it's, it's always putting others, um, you know, it isn't exhibiting the objects, for example, the Benin bronzes, isn't it always, uh, doesn't it always result in othering because it's presented as something exotic? It's presented as, as something ethnographical instead of look at, looking at the origin or only looking at aesthetics. It's always, um, it's, it's a form of colonization, so to speak. Oh, for sure, that's, that's um, true. And, and so it's so important that these processes of restitution will be happen, hopefully, in Germany next year. Um, but then you, you choose a place in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And is it again a museum? And it's again a place of power. Somebody has to decide. Yeah. Uh, how do we attack, uh, Nanette, the position of power or the structures of power the, do, that, that we have? How can we deconstruct? Because 
decolonialization within museums is a, is a main topic, and it happens everywhere. But still, even with decolonizing the museum, uh, structures of power, othering, that's not changed. Giving objects another name, for example, doesn't change the structure of, of power or exoticism. Yeah, well, that's, I, I was in that room when uh, Shimamanda Adichie was speaking about who tells the story, and I, and I think this was a very, very important and symbolic discourse in, in, the, in the Humboldt form. So this problem of unequal power relationships, this is part of, of, our, yeah, of our society. And I think we must be very, very aware of those unequal partner yeah, relation, uh, relationships. So I am a little bit afraid that sometimes even the restitution debate uh, is getting recolonized by uh, white people. And how do they do that? Well, how do they do this? I'm here on this <laughs> podium as a white director of a uh, German museum. So, um, and I think that's, that's why I'm very happy that the Musée de Civilisation Noire, <coughs> the Dakar, is, is here on this podium, even if it is uh, uh, digital. But I think this, this awareness is, is, is very important that in every step, in, this, in the debate of restitution, we must be aware of this, because I, I feel that since one year, it's, it's, it is, we, 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 we can recolonize it a little bit. We have to, have, we have to be aware who has a seat yes. at the table. We have to yes. be aware whose voices are and being heard. to give power back. And how do you share power or give power back? Yes. Um, who, who should take a seat at the table? Because even in the continent, uh, in Africa, in the different countries, different opinions uh, arise. If you look at Congo, people say, well, let's have a let's clean up our act first in Congo before we can talk about restitution. So there's not only one voice heard. So the diversity of different voices, how do you include it, them in these debates? Well, one answer when it comes to French museums, for example, is to include l communities in, uh, and, and more, most primarily uh, communities for, from uh, issuing, issued from the, the, the migrants, uh, local communities, and, and, and talk to them so as to make the museums theirs. Uh, in, in a way, we should look at uh, migrants, for example, um, and uh, Afro-Europeans, not at the as the uh, objects of uh, our work, but uh, as the subjects mm. of our work. And most often, museums, at least in my country, tend to work uh, you know, on their own in their ivory towers, so to speak, before presenting whatever they have to the public and mm. say, OK, this is an exhibit. Please come. And the exhibit might be wonderful. Mm. But people are not included into the uh, reflection into the preparation of the exhibit. So one answer to what you are saying about the structure of power is to open the museum onto society mm -hmm. and to have museums speak at the, at the bottom up, so to speak, so yeah. as to be the museums of communities, not a museum, you know, standing up there, yeah. but at a more uh, approachable level. And does that fit in the sense that, because internationally there's a lot of discussion about the position of museums, and what <coughs> divides the international museum community is the statement that museums are not neutral places. Museums are places that take a stance and everything is politicized. Not every museum agrees with that. What is your idea? Are museums neutral places or are they politicized? Museums are not neutral places, but they are not either political objects. Mm. So we have to think... But what are they? Uh, if they're, if they're yes, uh, the opposite of neutrality is not political. Yeah. The, the, the museums create uh, spheres of understanding for other countries or other communities, for example, which are not neutral. There is a, a perspective, there is a, a, a historical 
discourse which can be found in museums for sure, but those there's discourses can also be um, heterogeneous. You mm. can find different discourses, especially in large museums. It's not within the same institution. Within the same institution, you can have different discourses. You can have dis different on discourses. On peut avoir différents discours, bien entendu. Ah, um, we will turn to Amadi in, in a second, but because I would like to address uh, this question to you, because the Ombud Forum is not the only German case that was recently uh, in, the, in the middle of a storm of controversy, and um, you're currently meeting a lot of resistance, um, and when the SKD retitled several objects, and that happened in the Rijksmuseum as well. Uh, some objects were retitled. It did stir a little bit of controversy, but what happened in Germany? So last year there was a lot of pressure because some initiatives wanted to tell us that we can't exhibit some works anymore. So they moved Esmeralds. So, um, and, and, and then we discussed with them and we prepared a project to rename, retitle um, objects with the N word and M word, so mu and Z word, it's uh, Roma and Sinti. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so there are some uh, different groups. So the one is when there was really a mistake. So for example, La Negresse Couché de Rembrandt, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a white person, but it was named La Negresse. Mm -hmm. uh, or Otto Dix made a portrait of a little girl and she has a name um, and it was Susu. Uh, and a later member of the staff of the museum in the 70s gave the title Negro girl Susu. Mm. So we we decided to all to cancel all these mistakes, and then other groups um, we decided to, when we found um, that the content is not acceptable anymore, but they are not original titles, we suggested new titles. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was a real shitstorm in the last three weeks um, that it is not uh, that we have no right um, that because it's a cultural heritage of Germany and Saxony and we are we don't have the right to give new titles um, and it was um, the, it came from the um, right wing party and they used the media they didn't understand that it was coming from the, from there. Uh, and all our colleagues in whole Germany, they um, were against us that we don't have the right. So mm. um, There was no support for no changing su the names. No support. So the one year we were attacked from the one side and mm. now we are attacked from the other side. But um, So we, we uh, really are of the opinion the museum is no neutral space, so we have to take a stand. Um, and the threats can be that we don't give, have any money anymore from the state. That's okay, we will survive it. But I think we need support, and we need we have to work internationally and all together on these questions. Mm. And, um, yeah, I only wanted to. to so, tell as, this as an as international as museum community, that where a lot of discussion is happening right now, what you're asking for is support in order to um, to, to 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 change names. Um, which are given in a very much later stadium uh, and not uh, originally uh, the, the artworks or the works or the objects weren't named originally uh, uh, as they were. So that, that to, 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 to you need some help in that process. How can we help in that process? Yeah, first to acknowledge that um, language has a key role. So the mm. sensitive language is so important for every process is to improve something. Um, and um, you can support, so Rijksmuseum has been one of the first museums who did that, 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 but that we are discussing this on an international level all together and also discuss what, what kinds of new language we can perhaps mm. together find to describe. What's your reaction to the political or, or the politicizing, because museums aren't political places, but this is, has been politicized by right-wing parties. What is, what is your response to this situation? Yes, obviously, uh, museums, especially museums which deal with uh, sensitive issues uh, such as uh, immigration, that's the case of my museum, are under watch, uh, especially from uh, extreme right, uh, xenophobic uh, politicians who uh, definitely consider those museums as uh, threats mm. to what they understand as a national unity, mm. a national unity that excludes, of course, non-whites and uh, people who do not belong to the country. So clearly this is an issue because what we deal with are not only historical issues, we deal with the current times. 
we deal with uh, the present. Who has what inequalities in our society? When we speak of issues such as uh, slavery, for example, we also speak about the consequence of slavery in our current societies. That is why these museums generate so much controversy sometimes. What is, that is why an exhibit on slavery is not some kind of cold object. It is loaded with uh, current issues mm -hmm. which we have uh, to face clearly. So am I correct in saying because it's, uh, those are debates that happen in society, these discussions and being in the eye of the storm is part and parcel of the decisions that have been made within the museum and then within the uh, national context in that sense because that's what happens in society as well. Yes, and I think that we should not avoid these debates. We should not turn our eyes thinking that we don't need to enter the, the storm. Mm -hmm. We should get right at it with how with our tools, yeah. the tools of history, of the social science, of yeah. arts, science, and be part of the conversation with our own way to do things, to, to say things, um, in, uh, in a diplomatic way, I think. Mm -hmm. It's possible to be calm on these on this issues, but we should not turn our eyes off uh, there's uh, current time developments. Yeah, you should address them and then choose, choose the tools within museums in order to do that. Nanette, can you explain to me in the German context, why is there a lack of support uh, from other institutions? I don't know if there is a lack of support of other uh, institutions, but I think, as we say, museums are actually political spaces. It's, it's, it's a dream or a myth that we think that museums could be neutral spaces. So I think the, perhaps the lack of support is that all museums are a little bit afraid. Mm. Uh, they, they, they are getting aware that they are very political and that current debates are very linked to those museums. So I think it is a general uh, reaction of museums that they would like to avoid it, what yeah. you say. So but yeah. I think we have to open the doors, yeah. radically open the doors for conflicts and show also solidarity for unheard voices. And that's what's What's going on now at the moment? I would like to move the, the conversation to uh, uh, museum concepts and, like I said, about exhibiting the other, and that's what was mentioned before as well. Um, you talked about the Benin bronzes that you, that you, that, 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 that you have currently. Um, can you explain in what context the Benin bronzes are, ex are they being displayed? So at the moment, we took the decision not to show them anymore till um, the situation is more clear. So we are waiting for the next year, waiting for a delegation coming from, from Nigeria and um, select works they, they would like to have and they want to use because we have um, more than 400. So it's a, it's a big group of work. So, um, and, and then um, we hope that we can develop together um, forms of co-curating restitution, of course, but perhaps not, not uh, every work. So I think they don't want to have every work, so they told us already, so we have to select together and see what, what can we, what stories we can tell in Germany, what we can tell there, how we can internationally work together, because this is a really, these are masterpieces of art history mm -hmm. and um, we, we have to cr create new narrations together. And, and, and what do you do in the meantime? Because I do understand the co-creation with yeah. other people, with other groups, with other perspectives. But we mentioned in the introduction that there are three ethnological museums. Yeah. Um, what's the approach of the ethnological museums? Because that should be revised as well, shouldn't it? Of course. So um, it, it's only in this case that we are really waiting for coming to a political solution. But of course, we are in contact with the people. And then we have a museum slab. Uh, so we have an exchange program from uh, different colleagues from African countries to come to to um, our country. Um, we are. Um, 
so we have several projects to um, to work together on certain important questions. Um, for example, we, we just spoke about that. Um, it is a um, um, strange situation that we, in a way, rehumanize objects when we give them back, and on the other hand, how we speak about migrants. Mm. Um, so these different discourses, different languages, we are discussing these topics at the moment very much in Germany. Um, and um, th then, of course, there are um, other topics, loss of language. So, mm -hmm. for example, when you, when you have a very traumatic experience, um, do, do you use lo your language? What is happening with societies or individuals with, after traumatic experience is something which which we share in, in all over the world. And we have these projects to work together in co-curating groups mm. in the three museums in three different locations. Yeah. Should, um, I would like to ask Amadi, um, should objects from a colonial era, I think it's very difficult to describe them, but let's, for lack of, better, of a better term, use, use that uh, expression. Should objects of, uh, uh, from a colonial context even be displayed in Western museums nowadays? I'm not talking about the restitution, but the objects that are, are, are here, should they be displayed? What is your opinion on that, Amadi? My opinion is yes, and I will tell you why. First of all, I think when I listen to my colleagues, my German colleagues, who have a lot of difficulties, uh, the risk for us now is to enter a form of uh, uh, problem for the pros and against. According to me, the question is simple. The you know, ethno graphical museums are coming from other collections. On the disciplinary uh, point of view, analogy is the study of the other. We look at this object and we interpret them uh, from an occidental point of view, a western point of view, and in a subordination relationship. That's to give you why I said yes, according to me, if we remain in these draconical sequences, we will still continue to analyze the history and the African production in sequences before colonization, during colonization, and after colonization. I'm talking about politics, and now we are talking about the colonization of these collections. We are in draconical sequences, and this is causing a lot of problems. Africa has not been planned to be colonized. Colonization is just a sequence that comes in the history of Africa. But we, when you are in a synchronic perspective, everything changes. Because in a synchronic perspective, a culture is a culture. All the cultures are equal. And we have the duty of not to subordinate. So from that point of view, there is no difficulty in receiving here at the Museum of uh, Civilization Noir, objects that are representative of Western uh, cultures. We've received Leonardo da Vinci here. In a few months, we are going to receive Pablo Picasso, and I would really like to receive here in Museum of uh, Civilization Noir the technologies of Ashtar. Uh, that, uh, that's what we can call uh, cultural essence. We have to be able to look at and discover African objects in Western museums and Western objects in African museums. Mm. Because you. if you keep that position of uh, subordination, that's not good. We have to put an end to that. I am eager of discovering who the indigenous are in Europe, because you, you have discovered who the indigenous people are in Africa. So, <laughs> For me, the breaking line or what should be returned should be returned. And the modalities of dialogue should and interpretation should be set in a perspective of unsubordination. That means a serious dialogue, a true dialogue of cultures. It's not only among specialists. The politics are doing their job, be it from the right or the left or elsewhere. 
they are looking for electoral targets and they are trying to see what the audience is looking for, what the population is looking for. But now, at the African point of view, I think that the perspective is unsubordination. We respect your culture, and our cultures should be respected at the same level. Right. And, and I, if we, I agree have, with if that. If we have sorry. a dialogue, we are going to find a solution together. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for your contribution.